Hey everybody, Boris Nelson, BK Force. Welcome to the Commodity Dollar Update for February 12th to February 16th, 2018 for Aussie Dollar, Dollar Cad and Kiwi Dollar, the Com Dollars. And the story in the Com Dollars is actually quite interesting. They actually traded counter trend to a lot of the risk on risk off trades. This is, I think, perhaps the most interesting and surprising aspect of what happened this week is that um, all of them held up considerably better against the onslaught of risk off trades than did the majors and that really sets us up for some very interesting cross trades which we'll talk about in the next uh in the next video but for now um let's just sort of deconstruct what's going on in the um, each of the uh calm dollars if you look at the aussie it did drop down a little bit uh the resistance now is 80 instead of 81 but support is still very close at around 7750 it really has a lot of a lot of uh support on these on these levels and doesn't seem to be budging to the downside. We do have the employment report this week, which will be the single biggest major event in the calm dollar land. Uh, but even that is unlikely to have much of an impact unless it's grossly lower than what the market thinks. Dollar cat had a very interesting week this week because really it spiked up high um, really through the 25s and the 26s on the weakening of the oil prices, a lot of risk off flows, but not necessarily any kind of a negative story out of Canada. Now, there's still lots of tension around NAFTA. There is still, I think, quite a lot of resistance from the BOC. We had the BOC Deputy Wilkins talk about it this week of tightening monetary policy just yet, given all the turbulence that's going on in the North American market. But I'm underneath it all, the data is still quite good. We finished the week with very, very strong Canadian data, even though the headline print was terrible. The underlying data was actually quite good. They created 50,000 full-time jobs. Yes, the, it lost 80,000 part-time jobs, but that's not a thing that anybody really cares about. It's much more important to create the full-time jobs. And that suggests demand in the Canadian economy remains relatively uh, buoyant. And Canada actually fought um, fought its ground. Looney really fought its ground in the risk-off trades um, after that. And 2650 to me or 2600 looks very, very, very strong resistance, which gives me a lot of confidence that this is probably a good area to sell against uh, this week if we get any kind of a, a return back to risk on flows. And Kiwi also had a very mixed message performance. So RBNZ came out this week and acting governor Spencer just sort of gave this what you would consider to be a mildly bullish Kiwi case. He didn't say he was going to raise rates. He didn't say that there was a um, um, any immediate threat to inflation, but he also just didn't seem to care about the strength of the, of the uh, Kiwi dollar. He seemed to think the economy, even though it was mildly downgraded in the first quarter, is going to bounce back very strongly in the second quarter, and seemed relatively sanguine about how things were going. In, in short, there was no indication whatsoever from monetary policymakers that that there's a chance of a further easing. But then, then came the deputy governor McDermott like a half hour later and gave a completely different message to the market and, and Kiwi got hit very hard, went through the 72s, but then held the 72s. And 72 now becomes a very, very key support level for uh, the pair. As I said, when you look at the calendar this week, there's really only one uh, important event on the Comdal land, which is the Wednesday uh, employment data out of Australia. Uh, we're actually mildly bearish that data set because we care manufacturing, construction, and employment. Um, but stronger services. So it's a mixed uh, mixed result, which means we could have a, a mildly underperforming uh, data set coming out of Australia. And that's it. I don't think there's anything I'm looking here for Canada. There's definitely nothing on the New Zealand side. That's about the only calm dollar event uh, worth watching. So that takes us back to the charts. And let's start, let's start with the Aussie first. And you can see the Aussie did have a second corrective week, uh, perfectly natural. You know, we've been, we've been ad infinitum talking about the fact that 8081 was a big resistance level and now that resistance level has proven itself once again but now we're coming back to this first level of support in this range which is the the former highs become become support former resistance becomes support at the 7750 level effectively which is sort of where you know where we're at we're at 78 so assume that 77 78 presents a pretty decent support area and a possibility for us to bounce back up uh which is why i am uh, mildly bullish the calm dollars this week on any kind of a uh, risk rebound because they've shown relative strength as we um, uh, as we closed out the week. If you look at Caddy, the picture is even stronger. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just go. I need to go to the daily charts because this makes it 
uh, much cleaner. If you look at the daily charts, you look at this 26 level, 25, 26 level right over here, and that is a very, very stiff resistance. Now, we did peak above it, right? Uh, the initial headline response to the, to the employment number was negative. It pushed dollar cat up, and then right away, it brought it down. This, to me, really signals a very strong possibility of further downside. I love these um, uh, these uh, shooting star candles. They are one of the best turn formations you can see. And we certainly have the fundamental catalyst behind it because the data has actually been quite good. So all we need is just a little love. We just need a little love from the equity markets, a little risk on trade, oil coming back up. Where's oil? Oil coming back up over 60. All of those things can take us right back down to those 25 which I think is a very reasonable trade. I of all the um, of all the calm dollar major trades, I really like this trade to the downside. Um, and the only thing that will blow it up in my face is if we have just massive sell-offs and that we take out the highs over here. Uh, but even amidst the very strong sell-offs, Caddy just did not budge. It you know it, it really fought. Um, uh, dollar Cad really did not rise. So to me, any kind of positive flow will take us back down. If you uh, if you sort of uh, maybe want to give yourself some caution. You could wait until we break 25.50 on, on, on a flow basis to give yourself confirmation that indeed we're going to be heading towards a 25, possibly 24.50. So Caddy looks really good. And then Kiwi is the least volatile, most uh, compressed range. This is the dailies. You can see that 72 held. Uh, today was a nice big turnaround day. And we have scope here to ru really run all the way up to 73s. For now, you sort of operate under the assumption that 72 is a near-term support. So that's pretty much how the uh, Calm Dollar Week sets up. It all looks ready for a turn. Uh, it all looks like a relative strength trade, and that sets us up for some interesting cross trades, which we'll talk about next. Wish you guys the best luck, best trading. Borch Lossberg, over and out.